So if you've been confused by this distinction between a research gap and a problem statement or the statement of problem, then you wanna stick around for the rest of this video because I'll show you exactly what the difference is so that you understand what you need to do in your thesis or your papers. If you're new to this channel, my name is Marek Kiczkowiak and I run Academic English Now where I help researchers and PhD students write research papers for top journals in the field. And in this video, we're gonna clarify this muddy distinction and confusing distinction, I think, between a research gap and a problem statement. And I think the, the problem here is that, you know, people sometimes try to split hairs in 1000 different parts and they they talk about these seemingly different things as if they were actually different where in fact they're really talking about one at the same thing so what i'm going to say at the start of this video is that a research gap and a problem statement is really exactly the same thing there is there is really no difference in it and really kind of trying to focus on what differences and definitions there might be between the two terms is just an absolute waste of time, really. Why? Because, you know, the main purpose of whether you want to call it a problem statement or a research gap is to show the justification for your study, right? That's, that's the main thing that you've got to do in the introduction. Whether you're writing a PhD thesis or you're writing a research paper, you need to show us why you're doing your study. And the way to do that is through identifying a research gap and basically just stating what's the problem with previous research, right? Because then from then you derive your research question or your research aim. But, you know, to, to argue and spend the, la the next 10 minutes kind of saying, no, you know, you should first state the problem and then have the research gap. But how is a problem different from a research gap? Well, they're not different. They're one at the same thing. Another reason why I think this distinction is just completely useless is that, you know, a, a problem, a research, a problem can be a type of a research gap right so there are several different types of research gaps and i have another video where i go into a lot of detail about them but in essence you know you can talk about the lack of research or insufficient research in a particular uh, place um, on a particular group of people or things on a particular subtopic using a particular methodology so lack or insufficient research then we've got um then we've got a lack of understanding or a controversy in your field and then we've got limitations of previous research but, you know, we can also have um, a problem, right? Um, a practical problem that needs resolving, right? So imagine that, you know, you're, you're doing a study where all the previous approaches to a particular problem, um, be it theoretical or practical approaches, certain methodologies or certain kind of ways of producing things, they've proven to be unsatisfactory, you know, and each of these approaches has certain problems with them, right? And in your paper, you're suggesting and you're using a different approach, right? So that, that's, that's kind of a statement of the problem. There is, a, there is a problem with the current research and approach, and that gives you motivation for your study, right? So really, in essence, I think, it's, it's completely useless and irrelevant and it's a waste of time to keep on kind of splitting hairs about like definitions of something, you know, and whether something is a research gap or a, or a problem statement, that's just completely irrelevant. Like what you wanna be doing is basically finding the rationale for your study, the reason for your study, right? And then the, the reason for, for your study is that there is either insufficient research or there are limitations of previous research or there is um, there is a controversy in your field or a lack of understanding or there is a problem a, a real world problem that needs resolving right these are the four reasons basically why people conduct research and you need to state that 
in the introduction before you state your aim. And whether that's called a problem statement or a research gap, again, it's irrelevant because nobody at the end of the day, when they read your research papers, nobody cares. What they care is that there is a clear reason why you're doing what you're doing and that reason clearly derives from the literature and is clearly linked to your aim, right? So if you were confused by this distinction between problem statement and research gap, I hope this video helps. And if you want more tips like that, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button so you don't miss future videos. And if you want to work with me more closely, then definitely book a free one-to-one -one consultation session. And it's, the link is in the description to this video. We're going to identify your exact challenges, pinpoint your goals, and then outline how to get to those goals as quickly as possible.